So content micropayments on the web have been talked about for, forever, and it's a very interesting discussion. We're happy to have it with anybody offline about um, different like pros and cons of it. But um, one of the things that has not existed before is this kind of payment method where you could be absolutely sure that you could pay anybody else on the other side, and also on the recipient side that you could be sure that you could actually get paid by anyone. Um, so what I'm going to show off, so let's say I go to a website. And it has an annoying paywall. Um, this is a very, like, very annoying paywall. Very annoying paywall. <laughs> if, you, if you got this when you went to the New York Times, you would definitely click away. So what it's saying is that, um, want to get past me automatically next time, install the HTTP ILP Chrome extension. So I've actually already done that. Uh, I just have to enable it. So uh, what I'm going to do is um, show you both the the demo interledger thing so you can actually see what happens. But the, what, what I want to show off is like, so I'm going to reload this page now with the, um, I actually, yeah, so it went too quickly, I apologize. So what I was, what I was going to show you was just so this, um, uh, all, of, all that this extension needs to know is this just, I logged in with my account details. Um, in practice, you wouldn't actually want to give your password. You'd want to have some more secure way of doing it, like OAuth. But it's all demo money anyway. So um, account, password, and then I can set things like a daily spending limit. And so this extension can get very sophisticated in terms of what it what it sends out. Um, but what has happened is that um, it's actually gone and in the background. It was as I said, too too quick to show off, unfortunately. But um, what it's gone and it's gone and paid a tiny little bit of money to the to this website, um, and the website's actually just said, okay, like you paid me this money, now I'll actually show you a different and better website, um, which is much nicer than even though it still has no real content, much nicer than getting the paywall. And so what this is showing off is that um, if it's as simple as the the recipient just has to say, put money here, and I will. I'll credit you and, in this case, give you a better website experience. Um, you can automate this very easily, and you can get very sophisticated on the sender side to only send when you want to. Uh, but I'm going to show off now another kind of extension of, of this idea of paying for things in very, in very small amounts. Uh, um, can you show the headers real quick, or like the information being exchanged? Um, I can, but... So right right now this is working with um, HTTP headers. Um, actually thinking about it a little bit more, it may make sense as a as a JavaScript API to do micro. Like, All right. Uh, All right. So um, this is the protocol uh, description that that this is based off of. Um, so it's based off of this very simple like um, you generate some token. Um, you include that token in your HTTP request, um, and then in the response, this, this is the, the, web, the server responding saying, um, you just have to pay 10 units into this account over here, um, and this is your little like pre-funded balance. Um, and then step four is the ILP payment, and so that's just what, what we showed off before. And the, whole, and the whole point of this is just to be able to sort of correlate when the when the server sees incoming payments, they'll be looking for like th for this little token and saying, oh, okay, this was you that paid me in the background over here. Okay, I'll I'll credit you this amount. So that so that's the idea of this this payment token. And so um, one one way to set this up, um, this is in no way final, but one way to set this up is to have uh, a kind of temporary token that you use to identify yourself. And so the way this is working is. I'm the client, so I'm, I'm going to pay the server money, and I'm also going to send an HTTP request to them. But I don't want them to know who I am. I'm not subscribed to them. I just want to you know, read one article or something like that. So what I do is I include the, the token that I'm going to use for, it could be this session, like I generate the token so I can throw it away and regenerate it as often as I'd like. Um, so I send the, the token along with the HTTP request, and I send it along with the, with the ILP payment. And so on the recipient side, they see incoming payment with some opaque token. It doesn't tell me who you are. So then I'll match that up when I get an HTTP request carrying that same token, then I'll know it's this person they've paid. Um, but the um, ILP by itself doesn't, um, like, with the core protocol, without anything layered on top, 
um, the, set, the, the recipient would only know what connector the money has come from. They wouldn't know who else it has come from. That's obviously like um, higher levels, higher level protocols might say that the recipient has to know, uh, but based for, for more compliance and business reasons, but um, the low level protocol doesn't fit. Doesn't <coughs> so you could have um, very private micro payments to, um, to be able to pay for stuff online. Um, so, one nice extension of this is, um, let's say, uh, Robert wrote a poem. Um, this is a classic one and silly example, but, um, and Sarah turned that into a song, and then Tracy used that song in a movie. Um, now, Robert loves other people using his stuff, his creative works, and turning that into other creative works. Um, as long as he's paid fairly. Now, in this particular example, this Robert happens to have died in 1963, but all most alive Roberts would um, would like to get paid. And it's kind of the same story for Sarah. Would love for other people to kind of use those creative works and, and turn them into other great things, as long as she's paid fairly. Um, and the same story for Tracy with the movies. Um, would love for other people to remix them, just would like to get paid fairly. And that's kind of what we have this whole... Uh, huge system of, of copyright built, built up on top of it. Um, and so the question that I will pose with this is, what if we could pay Robert, Sarah, and Tracy directly all at the same time when we're watching, let's say, Tracy's movie? Um, so an example of how that could work. Where did my demo go? OK. An example of that, how that could work. So um, what I'm, so what I've, what I've defined is a, is a very simple um, JSON format for expressing um, this kind of relationship. So um, you have, th so the idea is that this is a sort of, um, could be like a license that's embedded in, in content that says um, anybody can listen to or watch or remix my works as long as they pay me a certain amount. And then you could define different people that different amounts are supposed to go to. And so actually, well, I, if you want, I can explain more of that in a second, but I'll just show it off. So what, is going to happen is um, I've got this little simple JSON form, uh, format to find um, for a kind of fake movie, um, and the you know the movie is going to pay. Um, the movie is paying the main character, the producer, and the production company, and then each person down kind of defines when when they're getting paid. Don't just pay me, but I've actually I want to give credit to these other people and, and so forth. So what we can do is automate that with ILP. Um, so what you can see is just um, these are firing off lots of little payments. And the, these payments are going off in amounts of, now granted, these units are meaningless, but um, <laughs> but in very small amounts, like 0 0.0194. Um, and that could, so that could be of, of any type of any type of unit. But the point is to show that um, you could, you using this type of system, you could enable a lot of payments use cases that are not currently possible today. Because if I wanted to fire off, like, a, you know, if, if every time I paid for something, I fired off not one payment, but 150 payments, that would probably take down most of today's existing systems. Um, but if you have this more kind of distributed architecture, it could actually handle that. And you could enable some really interesting things where rather than today, the way um, paying for copyrighted works, works is like, if I'm going to listen to some music, I'm paying basically whoever can get closest to me, whoever can get up in my face the most, and then they're responsible. They, you know, they take a big cut, and then they're responsible for um, distributing out the money to all the rights holders behind that, whereas it would be a very interesting setup if you could instead just like pay directly to all of the people, because you could embed that information um, and then fire off those little payments. You should mention like what uh, a big value proposition here is um, for artists um, who want to remix other other artists' stuff, not to have to negotiate. Yeah. So um, for so for this specific use case with with uh, artistic content, right now it's a really big hassle. Like even when we're um, when we're going to make pre all these presentations, we're like, okay, looking for stock images, and most like public domain stock images are not of super high quality. Yeah, our presentation would actually be amazing if we just... Right. <laughs> um, um, 
Yeah, yesterday we were looking for some action shot, and it was unbelievably difficult to find one. But so anyway, so um, it, right now it's a really big hassle to negotiate for uh, the use of, of copyrighted works because basically what that entails is like calling up an agent or some association and saying like, I want to use this stuff, can I? And if you're some small guy making one presentation, it's definitely not worth it, and they might not want to talk to you or take your money anyway, because you're, if you're offering them, I'll send you 25 cents, they definitely don't want to check for 25 cents. Um, but with this, you could actually just make it a lot easier to use creative works, and so this would benefit both sides, both the receiving side, but also um, the one that's doing all of the remixing, because it would just be a lot easier to pay all the relevant people and kind of automatic and just have that much more automated. So you don't have to think about calling them up and saying, hey, like, I want to use your song for this one thing over here. Could you not sue me into oblivion, please? Like, I'll give you a little bit of money.